Ah, let's see. Bam. There it is. We're all trying to figure out different ways to be healthier, uh, whether it's getting to the gym or being smarter about nutrition, but often sleep is overlooked. I am absolutely obsessed with my Whoop. I love that it collects, analyzes data, and gives you like a full report on how you did, how you're doing, when you should be getting to bed. And it's it, it always lines up, man. When you do to get the sleep you're supposed to get, you have so much better of a day. I mean, you just I'm feel better. Sleep in 10 minutes. You should. You should. You look like you need it. And if you're looking to be smarter about how you sleep, recover, and train, you can be your best. You have to get your WHOOP. For our listeners, WHOOP is offering 15% off when you use the code BEARS at checkout. Go to WHOOP.com. That's W-H-O-O-P.com. Use the code BEARS at checkout and save 15% off your order. Unlock your best self today with your whoop. There's a, of course, it's a membership service that provides uh, this fitness tracker for free and gives you access to their app, which provides all that personalized insight into recovery, train, and sleep. I can't tell you how much I enjoy my whoop. Get one today. This episode is brought to you by Kamikoto Knives. Kamikoto Knives make great kitchen knives. And they just released an epic 13-inch long Yanagiba knife. That's four inches shorter than Tom. <laughs> Accurate. Or longer, longer, longer. Each knife comes in a beautifully uh, heavy wood, heavy-duty ash box. And I'm telling you, these are gorgeous knives. They're, they're fantastic to pull out at a party, start carving a brisket, carving up a steak. I get a nice, uh, nice uh, top sirloin. Cut it up with the Kami Coder knives. They're impressive, man. You whip out 13 inches at a party, everyone turns and looks. <laughs> and these are single bevel edge. Kami Coder knives can achieve a wickedly sharp edge. You just can't get with other knives. They're ridiculously sharp. Like, ridic ridiculously sharp. And they cut through those ribeyes and top sirloins like butter. The reason is they only use steel source from Japan. And each blade is crafted using techniques that have been honed and perfected for by knife smiths for generations. If you go ahead and buy right now, Kamikoto is our, offering our listeners an extra 25% off site-wide. Be like those Michelin five-star chefs that use these knives, and you save 25% off site-wide on top of their discount. Go to Kamikoto.com and use the offer code CAVE. That's Kamikoto.com slash CAVE. That's K-A-M-I-K-O-T-O dot com slash CAVE. Start the show. This is 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 <laughs> Jews don't want to run the Federal Reserve. It's just that's not even a logical thought. Why would you? Did we just start? Yeah. <laughs> <You're such a laughs> you know what's beautiful about this bit is what? that you have to sit in the shower in the morning and think hateful thoughts. <laughs> they come pretty easily. <laughs> um, My so, Bertolina. This is a big announcement. Oh shit. If you, if you will allow me, I am, I'm, uh, go ahead and correct that for me. I'm very happy, proud to announce that this week, Hey Big Boy, Burt yes. Kreischer's second Netflix one hour special is debuting. Congratulations, my friend. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It feels... Mm. It feels so good. Hey, big boy, on Netflix, check it out. I mean, I gotta be honest with you. This fucking, I, I can't believe you've done this. What is this, four, is this your fifth is airing next week, right? Fourth, fourth is airing. I, dude, this is my fourth special, Yeah. but I'm just, it's the, the fucking, it's getting so much ex more exhausting than I ever thought it was. Well, the, the touring is, right? Touring's a, I, I, the touring is like the fucking sweet spot. This right now, touring has been the funnest it's ever been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's all writing and having fun on stage. But, dude, the press for a special, promoting a special. Yeah. 
thinking of videos to do for a special. I got it a video. Gives, it gives me anxiety. I got a video coming out tomorrow. Yeah. On St. Patty's Day. Uh, does it have the shoes you're wearing now in it? <laughs> it sure as <fuck> does. <laughs> those are so ridiculous. Yeah, uh, those are special. Big show at the store tomorrow. It's already sold out. Uh, 15 comics in the main room. Uh, four podcasts in the OR. Belly rooms of VIP lounge. What time does your thing start? 10 a.m. Doors open. I think it starts at 11. Mm -hmm. It's uh, yeah, it, but it's like all the bandwidth that it takes to get through one of these. And you know me, I can't really, I can't pump the brakes and slow down. Yeah, I just go harder and faster, and I go, okay, come on, yeah. I need a video for this. Yep, I need. <laughs> let's do a sled race. Let's do this. Yeah. I gotta donate a thousand dollars to this guy. Broke his jaw. Yeah. If I donate a thousand dollars, then I wrote, hey, don't man, <laughs> like, like my brain just doesn't stop in the marketing <laughs> mode of this. <laughs> I just. I mean, it was it was it was a different world when you look back at like when I did when I started doing specials in two thousand nine. Comfortably dumb. No one watched them, and that was how it worked. We watched Comfortably Dumb in your apartment, <laughs> uh, debuting on Comedy Central. Yeah, um, you wore your black button down collared shirt. So one, one of the main reasons I stopped wearing shirts was that special. Really? Yep. Sweat. Do you remember this? Yeah. Ripped into the gray shirt. Oh. And slowly expanded the yeah. whole special, okay. and it ruined the fucking special for me. I could not watch that special there because I started sweating so bad. Oh yeah, took my shirt off, never sweat again in my uh. entire life. I am fucking cool as a cucumber. Well, by the way, I am also the skinniest you'll ever see me on this special. <laughs> on on the new one. On the new one. On yeah. Hey, on Hey Big Boy. On Hey Big Boy. I'm. The Let's skinniest. pull it up. Let's see it. Let's see. Um, Let's see how skinny I am. We'll go to the it. clip that go to my Instagram clip that they that they fucking memed out. That bothered me so much. Really? To write a joke 18 months ago, right? Yeah. To work on it, to film it in November, to tell it and then have someone go, "Yeah, that is good. Let me just meme that and then that'll go viral." Um Nope. There it is. There we go. On the left there. Yeah. This is the skinniest I've been in my adult life for a while. You think so? I was running hard as fuck too. 220? 220. Yeah. Let's My see. hair looks awesome. Look at that belly. Yeah. That's me skinny. Isn't that sad? Look at that fat fucking arm. That's me skinny. Look at that belly. It's still like it. I'm skinny there for you know, me. You know what? This, if you can pull up and have it side by side, you from last week in New York next to this one. It looks like they were filmed years apart. Wait, do I look big in New York? <laughs> oh my God. No, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Shut up. Are you serious? You look so much bigger than this. Are you serious? It's good that you filmed this. That Yeah. Can you pull that up? Okay. Fucking Nadav's on it. <laughs> yep. Got it already. I had it saved on my phone. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I saw this, I was like, holy, when, when was this? And they're like, oh, no, this is over the weekend. <laughs> Dude, I oh. balloon up over weekends yeah. so easily. Of course, man. Flying, sodium, out, sodium, yeah. bo a beer. Yeah. I love a beer. No, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. It went, it went away now. pretty quickly. Yeah, I had a rough morning this morning. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. What happened? Uh, so yesterday, God damn it. I'm doing press for the special. Uh huh. Come on, motherfucker. Um, Let's see if it works this way. There we go. There we go. Yesterday, I'm doing press for the special. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, big boy, currently streaming on Netflix, and um, and uh, it was nonstop. It was nonstop. I, it started at nine in the eight thirty in the morning, yeah. and it just went until nine o'clock at night. Don't you hate it? The press? Yeah. I, you know what? I got to be honest with you. At a certain point, I go. I, I should stop talking. I, I did your mom's house with you. Yeah. It's kind of the highlight of the day because for some, man, I, I actually got in the car and I called Leanne and I go, I really miss Tom and Push because I haven't really hung out with you guys unless I do that podcast. It's like yeah. so fleeting. It's either yeah. one or the other. Yeah. And uh, that was the highlight of my day because it was so seamless. It was so easy. It was so much, so casual and funny. And then um, end the day at nine. God. I got home. I had to do reads. I saw the girls for ten minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. Woke up this morning. This made me angry. I don't know. If, I don't know if you'll ever compartmentalize it this way. Woke up this morning. Georgia had a late start. It's seven o'clock, and she's standing over me. I'm in bed. She's standing over me, and she made me a breakfast sandwich so that we could hang out for a little bit before she went to school. That's adorable. It's adorable, right? By f all, immediately, I start going. I'm a shit fucking dad. I'm putting. 
I'm putting all my energy into making money touring and promoting specials and promoting tours and to doing Netflix series and to working on the machine script and like I'm putting myself spreading myself so thin and by the way I'm only spreading myself more thin that I don't see my do- my oldest daughter who's at that precipice of like am I going to be a bad kid or a good kid at 15 years old yeah this kid woke up made woke up early didn't even make herself breakfast she had cereal and made me a breakfast sandwich and then I went up to the and then I just you know, I just murdered it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I don't it was so fucking good. It was the best breakfast sandwich I've ever had. She put hot sauce on it because she knows I like hot sauce. But she's a child, but she put the right amount of hot sauce. Like if I put yeah. hot sauce on it, I just dump it all over. Yeah. She put enough so you got a hint of hot sauce. Yeah. She made the eggs runny and then put cheddar cheese, big chunks of cheddar cheese, and then toasted it lightly. Fuck, you're going to make me want to go get one, Dude, man. it was the best breakfast sandwich I ever had. And then... We spend some time together. And she's like, all right, I got to go to school. And she takes off. And then I'm like, I got angry because I felt I got angry because I felt like I go, why, why is it always got to be me? Like, why do I got to do everything? Mm-hmm. Like, why can't why can't I lighten the load? I look at like I look at like you or Burr. I feel like you guys aren't running around like a chicken with your head cut off. You got, I feel like you guys got your your shit together or Rogan. Rogan seems like he's got everything dialed in. I get up I, elliptical. Uh, make my dinner with my kids, uh, shoot a bow a couple times, go over, yeah. lift weights, sauna, podcast, home, take the girls. It's like he's you feel so, like it doesn't seem scattered. It doesn't seem frank, scattered. Yeah. And I feel like fucking buckshot just everywhere. Yep. And and then I'm like, and then I get start getting angry and I go, why isn't, how come I feel like, where, I, like no one bought, we did the fucking shoot today and no one bought me pants. And I was like, why do I have to buy pants? Why do I have to buy tap shoes? Like, I'm like... Like, why do I have to do it? I get so angry. I'm yeah. fucking so mad. And then I call Leanne in. And Leanne's like, I go, Leanne. And she's like, oh, fuck. And I, and I go, oh, I get the old fuck look, huh? I can't get that. And I, so I got so worked up. <laughs> it was all because I just felt like I fucking dropped the ball at Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> and she did something nice. And then I manifested into like, why yeah. do I got to do everything? Yeah, no, dude, everybody has those mornings, though. Everybody has those days. It's I, I'm dying to see your your kids grow up yeah because like i think we all knew that that kid that made me the breakfast sandwich you me and push and leanne knew that was that kid when we met her that's true she has been the just the cutest fucking softest pushoverable kid yeah yeah in the world and then isla didn't even say goodbye to me today yeah <laughs> she was fucking out yeah i heard deuces bitch yeah the uh and so then i got to this uh shoot today and they had a beer and i was like yeah fuck it fuck it i i have no idea how um those kids will turn out do you know they're so young uh yeah. but ellis i feel like is gonna give me a lot of problems ellis is gonna ellis is gonna be i think i see like ellis being a part the parts of you but with but with i i with, with just the fucking hell raising part just the oh i'd kill a dog yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah if it attacked my brother i'd fucking murder it <laughs> he yeah he's uh <laughs> he's doing this thing now i go uh i love you so much and he goes that's great <laughs> i wonder if ella and Eilis would connect <laughs> yeah ella and Eilis. isla my fucking uh, yeah, kid <laughs> yeah <laughs> probably so wait have you started the hard push for your special for your promotion Hard push starts. Um, no, hard push starts. I don't know. I have press next week. Doing it Conan. Pick, yeah, but most of the big press I have is um, after, like a week or two after. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I kind of like was I did it all myself. A week after I do. Cold I looked Bear at, and I'm not doing any of that. I I looked at like what I thought served people well. Yeah. So I think Nikki did press better than probably anyone. Nikki and Whitney were the two people that really killed it this year. Impress? Impress, in my opinion. How so? Um, I, f- I mean, this is just very shallow, and I'm giving you all the tricks to my trade if you're listening, but like, yeah. I follow Google Trends. I look at Google Trends, and I look to see when people's specials drop, how they spike, right? I see that Nikki had just... Nikki, Ali Wong, Eliza, the women just murder it. Now, there is a little bit of an outlier in this in that the I just named four absolutely gorgeous women so a lot of guys hear him on a podcast and go, I want to see what they look like. Mm-hmm. So they Google them and they Google and they flip through a ton of pictures. Yes. So it's a little bit of an outlier. Yeah, However, they Google like tits and then legs. By the way, I'm guilty of that. I've yeah. like fucking definitely Googled those exact same women. 
and just been like, God, fucking Liza's beautiful. Liza looks great in that new Marky Mark World movie. Yeah. She fucking murdered it. Like, I just watched the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. She's got a legit Boston accent. Like, legit Boston She's accent. She's talented. She's a good fucking actor. Fucking awesome. Right yeah. Anyway, I follow that. And then I kind of looked and saw what they did and what popped for me. So, like, I, I hired a publicist last time, and it was like $6,000. It was so much money that I was just like, I, I didn't feel like they really brought anything to the table. We did a, a late night with Carson Daly. And I was like, yeah, uh, I, I don't watch that. Right. Like, I don't watch that. And I don't think you watch that. Like, I'm, I, I, I did it this way. I know what I dig, and I dig this show. I dig Rogan. So you hit those people. Up. I just hit. I hit all my friends and say, "Hey, can I do your podcast?" And then I and then I and then I reached out to like Jesus and Miro, like the things I like, you yeah. know. And I was like, "I'm just gonna stay in my lane. I don't want to go too far out of my lane because I know sometimes when you go too far out of your lane and you have some edgy jokes that I wouldn't say I have edgy jokes, but I have some jokes that if you're not a fan, they're gonna fucking upset you." <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, you mean like if you were to do like daytime talk shows? Yeah, yeah, and they're that. like, so tell us about your experience at Starbucks. And I'm yeah. like, uh, uh, I don't uh, think that's good for this audience. I'm uh, I'm being pitched to some of the big ones right now. And I have that same thing. I'm like, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm going to sit down and they're going to go, you're calling Bert racist. How about this? <laughs> <one>? <laughs> well, no, it's like, here, here's a perfect example, right? So, like, I know for a fact that, like, our j inside jokes with our fans, yeah, we get that. Right, right. Uh, publicists don't get it. Hell no, they don't get it. They don't understand what this is. They also a lot of those people. If you were to go outside of the kind of lane, yeah, you transcribe a joke of yours like that's gonna go south real quick. You oh. tell your wife to cough into a wall. Yeah. Oh, like I I told that on a podcast the other day, like as a liberal podcast, <laughs> and they were like, it's pretty misogynistic. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh. yeah, yeah, but it's a joke. Yeah. And then I was like, you think that's bad? I wish Alexa had a flashlight attachment so I could shut her up the way I want to. And they're like, huh? I was like, with my dick in her mouth. Like, yeah. is that is that misogynistic? Yeah. <laughs> like, and then and then once you do it to me, I lean into it. So like, yeah. I don't want to like, I don't want to I don't want to put myself up for scrutiny because I think that is the mistake some people make. Yeah, it's like it's like why I watch Norm. You know, and it's like, and you look, you know, we, the way we talk, like fucking people bring up Ari. Me and you can talk like this about Ari. Those people, everyone listening knows that we know Ari. We love Ari. We've known yeah. him for a long time. Yeah, yeah. We can kind of shit on him and, and pick him apart, but we're friends with him. We still talk to him. We still text with him. Yeah. We're fine. But you go on another show and they're like, I like, I did Jesus and Miro. I was afraid they were going to be like, so tell us about your boy Ari. Oh, yeah. And then in that forum, you are, you are fucked. Because if you def and we you've talked if you defend him at all, how how hard would you have trashed him <laughs> on that show? If they'd have been like, "Hey man, real quick, your boy Art," right, you've been like, "Fuck that dude." I had already <laughs> planned. I had already planned on just texting Ari and going, "Just heads up, <laughs> I threw you to the wolves." I'm supposed to be <laughs> hard. I'm going. If it, like they someone hit me up because they're like, just eyeballing you like so what happened there and you'd be like this guy's a piece of shit is what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so and like and I don't I gotta be honest with you I, I love doing Conan but I don't know if I'd enjoy doing like a lot of late night shows because I'm not I'm not good in that that like uh, everything I do long, so why they always go so why do you take your shirt off and you're like I don't know man I don't really have an answer I know that that's the way media works now yeah but I don't have that answer anymore don't you kind of part of me every time I book one of these I go like Oh, I'm gonna burn stuff. Give, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I've regretted almost every thing that I hadn't recorded for myself using on a show. I've been like, oh man, Conan. I mean, yeah. I love Conan. Yeah. I love Conan. I love doing Conan. But you go in and you want to perform well. And yeah. So I did part of the period party joke that's on this special. Yeah. Obviously, I, you know, once you do you for Conan, you can only do like two minutes of it. Yeah. It's an, a nine minute joke, but uh, but man, it went fucking viral, and then. And then I'm sitting here going like, do I even tell it? Like, or do I just burn right, a joke that I right. didn't even exercise? Yeah, same. It's, dude, that's what's crazy about the internet is like going back to that cough into the wall joke that go, gets memed. You go, then you start going like, fuck man. Like how, like how do you, I shouldn't even put out my trailer. Right. I should have just let you see that on the thing. And then, cause pe there will be people that see that and go, oh, that's a meme. I saw that last week. Right. Not realizing, oh, he taped this in November. I didn't see that last week. Wait, do you, by the way, do you have the footage? up now what you in new york can you make it I look bigger great. i look great there wait a minute there we go i look great i look great there too 
What do you think of these kicks, though? You can't make it bigger? What do you think of those kicks? I can't really see from here. Rose, gold, Nike, uh, Nike uh, Air Force Ones. Nice. Let's see. Um... It is crazy that the late night space is now just, hey, can you burn your material? Yeah, for us. Yeah. <laughs> it really doesn't benefit you. I mean, kind of does, I guess, right? If you kill it on there, but it's no. like. I mean, like, I don't. I, don't, I, don't I remember think... when I did even, uh, uh, speaking of art, of doing his show. And. Uh, yeah, I look great. Oh, um, God. Look at the fold in my bottom of my belly. Yeah. No, we all see it. <laughs> my face looks the same. Um. My arm looks better. Dude, but also, your arm is up, and that usually makes a stomach smaller. You know? And Oh, no, no, no. I was pushing out. That's a joke I have where I was like, what would Hitler like if he was fat? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey. Oh, man. That's only like three months apart. <laughs> yeah, I fluctuate. Or did you just fucking cough? <laughs> it's an airborne illness. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. That's how it's going to, that's how you'll get it. It's not by touching your face? You can, but I'm saying it's in the air. I touch my face aggressively. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. Like, like on this podcast, we can have ideas. I, I burn material on this podcast. Yeah. Like, no, I, like, that, like yeah. where I go, where I, where I say it, and then it's funny, and then I go, well, fuck, I should have used that on stage. Well, no, because sometimes it prompts you to take it to stage. That happens. Oh, yeah. All the, the, time. the fucking uh, big black dude's dick with the push set. That's, yeah. that's a great fucking... That yeah. murder is really hard now. Yeah. Because I think people... It's funny because I'll say, my wife's friends with Tom's wife, and she sent her a text, and people will go, oh, shit. Yeah. And then I've added enough that's different where people still get a brand new laugh. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's good. I mean, that... You were the first person to tell me that you were like, we were, I was going to do Conan, you're like, I would not bring your A game. <laughs> and I said, what? And you go, I, you, I know you have a brand new hour, and you're working shit out. You're like, don't go in with the shit you love because you'll burn it and you'll fucking regret it. Yeah. And I was like, God damn it. Well, you know, like, like you, a lot, a lot of what I do are, are stories. Yeah. And like, even when I did Ari's show, like I had a good time doing it. His storytelling, you know, this is not happening, but I'd never told that OD story before. And then it went on there and it, you know, it got millions of views. I was like, Oh, that's done. Flying dildos. Uh, uh, so you just, flying dildos on there and, and you're like, now it's done. You're like, it's done. That That's the part. But I guess, you know, there's kind of a balance to it. But I think once you kind of have a fan base like you do, um, for the most part, you go like, oh, I just want to keep all these things for for what I do, you know? Yeah, it's weird. I, I, can I tell you where my head's at now? Mm. I'm thinking that what Andrew Schultz is doing where he re literally just records everything yeah. and just puts everything out. I don't know how that'll work. I don't know how that'll work with a special, meaning like I know he's filming a special or he's shot a special. I, I think he's releasing it through another platform. Yeah, but I think I think he's doing it through Amazon. Right. I actually thought, I mean, this is just like thinking. By the about, way, he didn't tell me that. I'm just guessing off. Of yeah, hand. yeah. Um, I actually was like, man, I, I wonder if what he has built, it makes more sense to actually put it there on his YouTube channel. Yeah, I, I, that's part of me feels like that's a bigger pop. Also, I feel like, what he's doing, it seems like he's doing almost every day he's releasing, if it's not crowd work, it's a bit. Content, yeah. Part of me thinks, and, and, I, and not, the, to, not, the, to, not to say I thought of this, but like I remember when I didn't think I was going to do my last Netflix special, Secret Time, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like, and I, was, I found I was getting a pop online on Instagram. I was like, what if you just did a special every four months or every three months or every two months and you released 10 minutes or 15 minutes? And you could really milk the 15 minutes. I think it's actually, I think what he's doing is a fantastic way to cultivate and build and have a direct fan base relationship. I mean, yeah. especially since it's working, man, I would lean into that so hard. I think I it, which he's doing, he's doing it. I would it. love to go back in time. I would love to be his age and doing it. Doing that? Oh, yeah. Instead of just what I did where I leaned into the road. Yeah. I mean, there's two different, There's it's like nine different ways to skin a cat. But, you know, I, my thing was, and I remember talking to your wife about this. I was like, you go do the road, you build a fan base that way. Yeah. You build your fan base in Des Moines, and then next week's time you go in, more and more people. It never fucking happened. It never turned out that way. It never happened. Actually, I would say it actually hurt me. But I got became a better comic, yeah. and no one saw me fail. And I got to I, I got to do the machine story for four years before anyone saw it. Yeah. But I think what Andrew's doing is really brilliant because you've just put content out. 
I think yeah. put content out. And people are eating it up. Dude, think about what's going on with the coronavirus. Why not go hit up local clubs, be recording your shit, know you're safe. Yeah. Guys, we're gonna we got this coronavirus test right at, outside the haha. I'm doing my I'm doing ten minutes. Yeah. Every week we get a brand new ten minutes and everyone's holed up in a house. Uh Jeff Tate, who we both know, is doing a thing where he records his shows and releases them, like on audio. So you can download a, sh uh, a set that he did, you know, an hour at the whatever, Cincinnati Funny Bone or Go Bananas. Yeah. And then goes on the road and a few months later we'll release another show. He's like, is he like, right now? Is he, are they all, it's all new original material? Yeah. 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 Wow. I mean, like, he does a he's lot a of. He's a great fucking stand up. He's a great stand up. He's a great fucking stand up. But it's more to that point of, like, of saying, like, well, I'm just going to put. It's kind of like Joe's theory on podcasting. Remember, like, when, when this was more um, building, he, and he was already ahead of everybody. He, you know, some of these, some of the big, other big podcasts that are, some of them no one talks about anymore started to do the paywall to listen. Yeah. And, he, and I remember Joe emphatically and just kept telling, because we would all talk about it. He was like, do not do a paywall. And it's like, why? He goes, just blast con Like, he's like, look what I do. I just like put this shit everywhere. Dude, it was the, and I remember it, how, how many times have I, I mean, you know, it's going to fucking happen. I'll be on my deathbed one time. And I go, you know, I listen to Joe on everything except for the quitting drinking. <laughs> Joe's been such a great, like, he's such, yeah. such a fucking help in my life. Start a podcast. Double down on the podcast. Do more podcasts. Get on the road. Stay on the road. Go to theaters. Ask for more money. Quit drinking. I was like, hold on. Pump your brakes, buddy. <laughs> you've, you've been hitting a thousand until there. Yeah. Um, I can only trust you nine out of ten times. <laughs> you don't have to accept a head like mine. Look at this disaster. Look at his. He's got a hat on. He's not even going to let you know what's going on under there. Oh, I know you look at us and you're like, I mean, I enjoy their podcast, but wow, what losers they are. It's true. We let our hair go without doing something and you don't have to be like us. 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35. Once you've noticed thinning hair, it can be too late. You got to get on it right away. The moment it starts creeping back, falling out, you got to be proactive. This way you don't have a horrific looking head like we do. Well, uh, you need to go to 4 .com, the one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. It's time to write a new chapter, one in which you have hair. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA-approved products. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. This was a, a website created for guys by a guy that says some of these conversations about guy stuff is better to be had online than in person and that's, that's right. what i love about this no awkward visit to the office no parking no staring at the floor in the doctor's office quick consultation online if they determine it's right for you a medication can going to be shipped right to your door hair treat your hair loss that way it's the way to do it right now our listeners can get started their first month free go to four hymns.com slash bears that's four hymns.com slash bears prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate offer valid only if prescribed three months minimum prescription additional restrictions apply see website for full details and important safety information remember that's four hymns.com slash bears that was impressive you like that run yeah yeah support for two bears one cave is brought to you by manscaped who is the best in men's below the belt grooming hold on let me see oh yeah Nice and smooth under there. Oh, hell yeah. St. Patty's Day is just around the corner. So there's no better time to invest in the proper tool to get you lucky. You and your partner will get lucky all right. Their Lawn Mower 3.0 show, it will showcase the pot of gold uh, that you have below the belt like no other. This Lawn Mower 3.0 is literally the best I've ever trim my junk with and my face. I know you're not supposed to go uh, junk to face, but they've got an LED light that lights up where you're trying to light your mustache that is genius yes i'm telling you right now this is the next level it shows you what you're trimming sometimes the lights will be up here and you'll bring your clipper in and it'll shadow out so you can't see the hairs anymore this led light i know you're not supposed to use it on your lips <laughs> but i can't help it and so, that's great well, go ahead no i just maybe uh so manscaped uh is wants you to keep it near your genitals but you're open to do what you want with it this and what's great about having it down by your junk when you're my size or Tom's size, Tom's even a little bigger, it's really hard to shave your junk because you can't see it. So it's a lot of guesswork, you know, just hoping the rubber didn't hit the road. Well, in this, with the Manscaped 3.0, you are 
you are safe. They've got their their Nick Free technology. Yep, and it has a skin great charger. Free, and the charger is right on the counter. You just place right. it right there. It's not tethered to anything, so you can trim up. I I'm telling you, I absolutely love the lawnmower 3.0. It's awesome. It's always a nice surprise for you and your partner when you can actually see the trees stand taller than when you trim the hedges back. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code CAVE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code CAVE. Cheers to manscaping your lucky charms. You, what, what about this? Okay. This is probably, never, never mind. Uh, but like, what, like, what if I just, what if I just, the thing I li- like, okay, what if I leaned into it this way? The thing I like, is writing material. Yeah. That's what I love. I love, I love this. I have a joke right now about finding a child and I don't have an end of the story. I can't find the end of the story. I remember I saw you working it yeah, out. And I, and it's, it's doing so well except for the end fucking teeters. It just goes. It is <laughs> nothing to me because I have a, not the same. I also have a thing about finding a child. I have a, <laughs> a story right now that has like, a, like excites me to tell. And doesn't go anywhere, and it is the most depressing feeling. It uh, sucks so bad. To go. And that's the end of it, everybody. Oh, especially <laughs> when they're all like, "I cannot wait for this turn that that you definitely have coming up," and you're like, "So, uh, yeah." And you see them go like, "Is he done?" And you're like, "I, I never, just never uh, got around to writing the end." I of didn't that. figure out the end of it. What do you guys think? And they're like, "It needs an end." Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. but, but when you find the end, yeah. Not but, even when you find the end. Yeah. It's when you find. The thing that will help you find the end. Yeah. Like I always say this, but like when I was at the Columbus Funny Bone and I didn't have an end of the machine story and I said, in the middle of that story, there was a, the teacher, this, he spit the booze in her face. I'd always, I'd always uh, then go, she was Puerto Rican. She was. I don't know why I included that. It was like one, like old hacky comic thing. Yeah. She was Puerto Rican. Clearly didn't know anything about Puerto Rican. Like yeah. it was like a dumb fucking joke. Yeah. yeah. And then at one night I just was like, don't say that. It's so stupid. And then I was like, and then he just looked at me and he goes, fuck that bitch, this is Russia. Okay, <laughs> what, the, 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 Do you know? What, what? Do you know who Rocco Sofredi is? Yes. <laughs> Hold on, do not start me on Rocco Sofredi. Do not start me on Rocco Sofredi. He said he has, I heard him tell the story twice. Oh my God. He's, we he, are pivoting right now in this podcast. Uh, we're I, pivoting I, I hard. I could talk about Rockus and Freddy all fucking Oh, long. he's a legend. He's the greatest. But he he tells a story. He said that um, that he was, I guess, shooting scenes. And, uh, Is that they, what he called uh, it? Yeah. Doing work. Um, and these <laughs> Russians like came over. CrossFit class. <laughs> the Russians came over. And to and he was going to work with them, right? So yeah. like Russian performers, um, the males especially, right? So the guys came, and he's like, "By the way, Russian performers are famous for the old uh, blindfold switcheroo." Oh, really? Oh, 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 I've seen a lot of the teen Russian or uh, older, <laughs> older. <laughs> older. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I say, like older teen. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's like the fucking skinny white dude, like up that, there, yeah. 16, 17. 17. Yeah, they just they're they they're they're like skinny dudes with big dicks. Yeah, and they and they always do the old blindfold. It's on Pornhub, blindfold, and uh-huh. then I'll put a blindfold on. Huh? Okay, yeah. all right, you like the dick? Ah, hey, hey, ben acá, por favor. Ben acá, por Oh, sorry. Bye, uh, Dion. Bye, Dion. <laughs> Sorry, that's Spanish. So, because you were saying you think that like we have too strict of like child stop, pornography. Stop, 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 stop. By the way, that was a huge slip of the tongue. The teen Russian porns. I remember I helped some dude move out of his house one time. My wife and her friend was there. They ended up getting married, and they were like, "Oh my!" They were shocked. They're like, "Oh my god!" And I was like, "What?" They're like, "We just found kitty porn." And I was like, "Are you fucking Who said this? serious?" My wife and her friend. The guy wasn't there. We were helping him move. He was out of town. And I was like, are you fucking serious? And they're like, no, he has kitty porn. And I was like, I, you got to call the cops. You got to call the cops. And she's like, I'm dating him. I'm fucking dating him. Where did they find it? Like, they found it on his computer? No, they found it. And they showed me. It's a magazine. It's called Barely Legal. And I was like, oh, guys, that's not. And then I was no. like, and they're like, it is. And I was like, you're right. It is. Fuck him. <laughs> 
I was like, barely legal is a selling point. It's that a means branding like issue. 18 in a day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So this is uh, the Rocco thing. So okay. he said, he told the story. I saw him tell the story twice. That he's like, the Russians, they came over and we are <laughs> shooting a scene. And the, you know, the men come from Russia. And I say, action. And right away, the man slapped the girl, punched her in the stomach, <laughs> spit on her face. And I was like, whoa, 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 cut. cut. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> and they go, we watch your movies. This is how you do it. <laughs> and he's like, no. <laughs> but to imagine that they're like, <laughs> punching the stomach. And the girl's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Action! <laughs> like, what hey, are you doing? Hey, you like my work? And then he said, "The best is," and they're like, "We watch your movies. This is what you do." He's like, "This is how I know I have failed." Like, <laughs> this is how I know this, I have failed. If this is what you take from my movies, you're not getting it right. You know, there's like he he said like the aggression. It's not, it's not just come out and punch <laughs> someone in the stomach. He's like, there's a... Like, what? This is what we do. You don't like? like you gotta, I thought you like. Eh? You got to connect. And there's a give and a, you know, a pull to like being aggressive. But it's not just come out and knock somebody out. Steve out. <laughs> <laughs> the Russians are like, just fuck them up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Coronavirus. Or I mean, not coronavirus. Rocco's the Freddy's. Did uh, did uh, did one one night in Paris with Samson Savannah Samson? Have okay. you ever seen this? Uh, no, I don't okay. think so. This is one of my favorite adult films. About. And uh-huh. I and I have I brought this up at a dinner party one time, and Liam was like, "Hey, no one is like into porn the way you are." <laughs> and I was like, "No, a lot of guys are." She's like, "No, I think you freak some people out." Yeah. So. Savannah Sampson goes on. By the way, I, I can't believe that you that like people haven't heard this. This is one of those. I think it's a really interesting story. Pull up Savannah Sampson. Me and you did a show with her one time. We did. Yeah, remember we used to do those porn star shows in uh, in Irvine. They do. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Savannah yeah. Sampson was on stage. I she showed me her pussy on stage. How was it? It was beautiful. I mean, she was gorgeous. She's gorgeous. She was gorgeous. She has a, a winery. Anyway, she goes on. She worked at Scores. She goes on Howard Stern. And by the way, if I'm fucking this story up, I don't care. It's better this way. Um, she goes on Howard Stern and says, uh, "One of my she's with her husband. Mm-hmm. One of my dreams is to have sex with Rocco Spreddies. Mm-hmm. And Stern's like, oh, we know him. Like, we, we, can, we can set that up. She's like, I would love it. And her husband's like, yeah, I think, you know. She wants to get into porn. That's, that's her next step. I think it's good. It's a good uh, financial decision. We want to open a vineyard. It's a great way to get the money to open a vineyard. Let her go to. Let her have sex with Rockers Freddy. So Rockers Freddy's like, all right, fly out to Paris. I think it's Paris. He goes, fly out to Paris, and I'll, I'll do a porn with I'll you. I'll do you a favor. I'll do you a favor. <laughs> right. So, I've seen this porn. He it's him, Savannah Sampson, and another girl. Mm-hmm. Now the other girl. Is like like if he's a Marine Corporal and she's coming to boot camp. Mm-hmm. The other girl's like, I just got through boot camp. I still don't love it. Yeah, but I can help you get through this. Uh huh. So oh, that looks like it's it right there, right? It, Savannah. It Rocco probably. with Savannah. Yeah, and so There's another girl there. So they start with oral sex. Uh huh. And it is a gra- It's clear Savannah Sampson's never had oral sex like this. Oh yeah. It, it's oh yeah, he's doing Oh he like he's doing he, tonsil exams. He's like, gonna send you back a different way than you arrived. It's like, to the point where I'm watching it and I, I catch myself going <laughs> and like and like wiping my mouth and swallowing, <laughs> like going Come on, okay, okay, we're like like almost going like I'm done, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm yeah. ghost sucking his dick. Do you ever watch the documentary, <laughs> his documentary on Netflix? No. You oh yes, I did. Yes, I, I. Oh, I think I did. One of my favorite parts of that is when they finally interview his wife, and they're like, "I mean, you're married to this fucking guy," and she was like, "She was like, well, I can't do 
the things that some of these girls do. Oh. Like, oh, is this the I, porn that starts with him in the shower? Yes, yes, yeah. It's just a documentary. Oh, yeah. oh it's a documentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a porn, porn for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. jerked off twice. <laughs> His cock is awesome. Anyway, back to Savannah <laughs> Samson. Savannah Sampson is now, I mean, this the one girl's holding her throat. Yeah. Rocco's got her ponytail. Yeah. He's got her head, so she can't get out of it. Like, it's almost like backed into a corner. Her head's on a couch, and he's just going as deep as he can into her throat. And you can see in her eyes, her eyes aren't like, oh, this is awesome. Her eyes are like, what the fuck did I sign up for? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, God. This is the Marine Corps. Uh, you, like, s- you said you wanted to do a movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. You like pretty dick in mouth. Oh. And then yeah. and then the blowjob stops for a second, right? God. And you can see her like. And she's like, is there an she's exit? Like, she's like, oh. oh. And he goes, all right, let's have sex. And me and her met eyes through the screen. Mm-hmm. And I, we both said to each other through our eyes, we haven't even fucked him yet. Yeah. Like, this is going to be a long night. Like, oh my God, if he did that to my throat, imagine what's about to happen to my pussy. And this is also going to happen to my ass. I guarantee you this happens to my asshole. Yeah. He does oh, not. Am, I'm going to need to take a couple spa days before I get back on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he needs the asshole. For him, for him, like a pussy is like a hand job. He's like, all right, this is a nice way to get started. But yeah. you're turning over and you're giving me your asshole. <laughs> Rocco Sofredi, that porn, I couldn't watch the whole thing. I, I got like... I, at one point, I saw the pro, the girl that his pro, yeah. like I saw her tap out yeah. and I was like, oh my God, yeah. if this is what the pro's about to do, Savannah, I want to hold your hand. I've seen so many with where the girl's like, not in my ass. And he's like, it's okay. And they're like, no. And he's like, it's okay. It's okay. And like, he just walks them into it. And then they're like, uh, you see the, 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 the fear, scared face, uh, 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 looking over the shoulder, and he's like, "He's nice," and he just gets them to do it, man. He it's just... it's it, that his. Did you ever see the one where he puts a girl's face in the toilet? He's done that a bunch, but yeah, I've seen a few of them. I mean, if my <laughs> wife, if my... <laughs> I've seen it... the ones where he steps on their neck. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, well, he he claims that it's the devil inside of him. Is that what is? Yeah. When when they're like, hey, man, you're doing hardcore porn and you're like 57 or what's up? He's like, it's the devil. The devil is inside of me. <laughs> In the devil. It's the devil inside of me. Yeah. He's in. T- How old is he? Because this guy, he's still How did doing. He dodge this. me too. <laughs> I think in his line of work, he's 55. 50. He's beautiful. Ooh, people also search for. Donald Trump. No, Danny was, D. Oh, sorry. Johnny Sins and Charles Dara. Dude, I, right. I mean, it's so funny. I, 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 I can't jerk off to Rocco Sofredi's porns mm. because I get so distra- I want to help them. I, yeah. I go like, no, let's get out of here. Let's get the fuck out of here. It's like jerking off to Frozen. Yeah. Or not Frozen. Well, whatever, you know. I don't know. Like, you just, and I, anyway, who fucking cares? I can't joke. Do you like that moment, like when the girl, like you can tell it's it's a girl's like first, and she's like, "I'm gonna fuck Rocco," and then she's like, when his pants come off, and she's like, "Oh shit!" Like she look, you can see that in her eyes, she's like, "That's gonna be inside of me." You can tell that it didn't register in videos. There's something. There's something that I I, that I enjoy in porn Mm -hmm. that I'm buzzed, and I'm sure I'm gonna regret saying. Yeah, it's the same look. Like I didn't love when Evil Knievel would talk brave to the, to the camera mm-hmm. and do the sports interview and be like, "Yeah, we got this." It's twenty. I liked the look right before he hit the ramp. And you can see in his eyes, like, "Am I gonna fucking be able to do this?" Yeah. Like there's, I, that's why I like backroom casting couch. Yeah. Because you could see in their eyes, like when they, he'd be like, "And now I need to fuck you in the ass," and you, they'd be like, "Huh?" Yeah. Like, like that the, look. The, the, like the the, you know what it is? It's taking the performer out of the porn. I, I could oh, not right. I could not connect with porn performers. Right. Girls were like, I'll suck this suck this pussy, lick this titty. Huh? Yeah. You want to fuck this pussy? I'm like, no, 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 no. No one talks like that. Right. No one does it like that. You like more amateur real stuff. I like real stuff. Like this yeah. stuff like where yeah. Leanne goes, what are you doing? And you're like, oh, I just thought we'd try it. You know, like like the, yeah. the shit that turns you on where I, t- I, I, I don't know if I've told you this, but like, did I tell you about the time we went to the strip club on tour in... Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, overseas. Nope, nope. In, uh, right here. Oh. We were in, uh, fuck, I wish I could give this place a shout out. It was a fun place. They were really cool. In LA? It was in Muncie, Muncie, Indiana. Okay. 
And so um, you said this is the best strip club in the world. It's not. No, you you recently you like the best strip club I've been to was in, and it was like some smaller town. No, that I think it was Christie's in Cleveland is one of the best ones. You did ever. not. That's not the one you mentioned. Is this the one where the girl was getting off work? Did I tell you that one? Don't remember. Oh, this, okay, I'll just tell the story. Stop okay. me if you've heard it. So we go to the strip club. We get done the tour, and my tour bus driver Ron has been calling us not such complimentary names because we don't want to go to strip clubs every night. Right. And so then finally I go. Does like, the word start with an F? It starts with an F and a okay. Q. And okay. so, yeah. so we uh, so an H mm-hmm. and a and a EM. And so I'll tell you that one later. So he, uh, so I go fuck it. Let's take Ron to a strip club. Mm-hmm. So I pull out like maybe like a thousand bucks or something. Mm-hmm. And I give, I break everyone off. I go, let's have fun. Everyone have a good time. Um, get table, whatever you want. So I get there and, and they're like doing lap dance. I kind of stopped getting lap dances just cause I was, I, I, it just was the last one I got was creepy. And I was like, ah, that don't feel like, so then, but I go, no, I'm good. And then one of the, I just st- want to back up that the sentence was, I've kind of stopped getting, I've gotten them since I've gotten okay. since. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. why I've kind of okay. stopped. Okay. It's like, I, there was a period where I, I put the brakes on it and then I was like, well, it, it's happened. Right. <laughs> it's going to happen. Okay, okay. It's like, I just don't go to strip clubs much, but I still go to them. Right. 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 So, uh, so the girl, the, I'm with the owner or the manager and he's like, you sure you don't want to lap dance? And I was like, yeah, I'm sure. And this girl comes up and she's like, oh my God, the machine. And I was like, oh, what's up? She's in like a winter coat, like fucking a beanie on, gloves on. And she goes, what are you doing here? And I said, oh, we're hanging out. We just got done the show. She was like, God, I wish I had known you were coming in. I wouldn't have she clocked out. I just clocked out. And I said, oh, that's too bad. And I said, well, here, uh, how much is the lap dance? And they like 20 bucks. I go, here's 20 bucks. Tell everyone you got a lap dance from me. She goes, oh, that's. I wish I had given you a lap dance. I would love to have given you a lap dance. You're like my favorite comic. And I was like, actually, I go, I've had a bit about this. I have a I've, bus outside. And I've wanted, <laughs> I've wanted to do this forever. Because I, I used to have a bit about going into strip clubs. It, it wasn't a bit. It never really worked because no one really got it, what I was trying to say. You fucking knock them out. You tie them up. <laughs> right? said, Rocco, you like? <laughs> the bit was that I go, you didn't. When you go to a strip club, they're so almost naked that the, it, it almost is like happens too quick. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, when you have sex with a woman, taking her clothes off is so much fun. Oh, right. And I was like, I wish there was a way they could, I wish they would have, a strip club would make so much more money if they had girls in clothes they'd wear to a, a grocery store walking around. You know, your mind is fascinating. <laughs> really? Yeah. This is a really good idea. Because, like, cause like I, you ever see a girl in the grocery store, you're like, God damn it, she's hot. Imagine if she then got naked for you. I mean, I don't know how you come up with it. Okay, keep going. So I tell her, I say, you know, actually, I used to have a bit about this, but I was about a girl fully clothed getting undressed. I would, because that's more like what you're used to. So I'll tell you what, if you got the time, I'll take, I'll take that lap dance from you. But you got to start from where you are right now with the winter coat and the hat and the gloves and the boots. She was like, I, I've never done that. And I was like, exactly. Like, that's the funny part. Like, I want to see that. Yeah. So we go to a very public booth, like oddly enough, like it's, it was right by the front door. And she starts giving me a lap dance and she starts with her fucking gloves and she just starts to take her clothes off like a regular woman. And it is, it, and it, it opened up a side of her that was so funny. Yeah. And she got embarrassed. Right. And like she got to her top. She goes, Oh my God, I'm wearing a sports bra. And I was like, okay. And she had like a, a, a belt implant in her stomach. She had her belt on. Uh-huh. And it was like, it was, and at one point we were laughing so fucking hard, the two of us, that she ended up putting her clothes back on. She goes, I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. And fucking left. And I went, that's the vulnerability you want. That yeah. same vulnerability right. that I like in porn where you go, I don't, want, I don't want the false confidence. Oh, the my false, fucking cunt. Yeah, that false yeah. confidence makes me actually sad. Yeah. Where I go, that's not you. And that's not who you are. Yeah. You're doing what the director told you to do. I agree. And, and, you're, and you're biting your lip through it. And I can't enjoy that because that's, I don't want to. I want to see someone really in control. Yeah. And, 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 and enjoying it. The high production pornos all have that excessive performance. You know what I mean? Like if it actually looks like it was, it could be released in a theater, then it always has a crazy level. Nadav, of, I'm going to need this one opened. You want to take that one? I, I only had a sip. I heard you cough. Okay, that's true. Um, the, uh, you were talking about high production values. Oh, I said that the high production value pornos always have that excessive performance the stuff that's not real you know what i mean like yeah. the ones that look amazing like they're cinematic always have that oh yeah 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 i hate that but it's, and then the ones that look like they're filmed on a phone are the ones that are like usually real or at least do you be- think that's because i fucked 
for the first time before porns were popular? Mm. Or accessible, at least. That that's why you like that? Why I like regular stuff. Mm. Why I don't like the high-end, like, fuck this pussy. I'll fist my ass well, I think like, that I don't think that has to do with when you had sex. For I mean, maybe it does. It just... it. It's not real, so maybe you know, maybe for a guy that's never had sex or didn't have a lot of sex, he sees that and he's like, "That's what sex is." Yeah. And so they're drawn to that, like the performance of it, and like people, you know, acting that way. But yeah, yeah I think if you've had real sex, you probably are more drawn to something that seems real. I don't know. I guess. I mean, it just—it's like Leanne's never. Leanne's never been like. I don't think she's ever said pussy in her life. Like. You want this pussy. Well, yeah, but who says that? She says cooter. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of believe it. <laughs> won't, get I, his, won't get this cooter. You want this cooter? Hi. Hi. Hi, big boy. <laughs> you want this cooter? You want this cooter? This cooter's getting hot and sticky. <laughs> Come on, get it now. Come on, get it, boy. Come on, get it. Go, boy. Yeah. No, there you go. Uh huh. Eat all yeah. of it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I would believe it. What does she call her vagina? I had a girl that called it, like had a definite word for it. Oh, yeah. I, I dated a girl that called hers the N-word. <laughs> uh, and we uh, both agreed that was the only time you're allowed to say it. <laughs> Such a good joke. That is such a good joke. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did you nickname your dick when you were a kid? John Henry. What? (laughs) They were in, like, seventh grade, and everyone was given their dicks nicknames. All the eighth graders were, and I was in seventh grade. We were all playing football. Yeah. And they were like, what do you call yours, Bert? And I didn't have a name, but I had heard that, that, you know, limerick of John Henry is a steel-driving man. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I was like, John Henry. And then they were like, oh, good name. And I was like, oh, fuck, thank God. Dude, there was a rumor. I almost called it Ernie. In my (laughs) high school, like in my middle school, that I had an enormous dick. That's not true. Um, (laughs) From from we went to a a sleepover and everybody was measuring their dicks, you know? And so, I don't know, you can, I I guess I measured from my asshole or something. (laughs) They they go, Tom, measure your dick. You go, 13 inches, is that big? Um, (laughs) <laughs> I mean, you know, like you put, you push against yourself and Where do you lay it. Uh, I'm your asshole, right? Right? I think so. I'm your asshole. And I just, for, I don't know. I just, I just, I don't remember exactly how I measured it, but I remember we're all like, we're all like right there with our dicks out. And I'm like, met, everyone's got like rulers or uh, measuring tape and whatever. I said, uh, oh yeah, nine. And uh, everybody was like, what the fuck? And then that, that spread in school. So then when I left that school, um, because we moved, everybody, like, everybody was, like, writing, like, see you later, Niner, and and then... Jesus Christ. Yeah. uh, Take care of my nuke bowl. Yeah. (laughs) People signed, like, made a book, you know, like, the girls, and they were like, wish I could have seen it, and then, like, drew a huge dick. Oh, my God. And the whole time, I'm like, damn, it does not look like that. It does. That's a that's a tough that like Pete Davidson got called out to have, uh, as having a big dick, uh-huh. and um, and Pete uh, like I don't know if he has a big dick or not. I don't know anything about his. Dick, I've heard, yeah, yeah, I've, I've heard, I've heard. I've heard he has a big dick, but yeah. imagine if he just had a regular dick. It's the worst. Right? And then, but he's I dude, I saw him at the Knicks game. He's a big dude. He's like fucking six four or something. He's like a he's like Tommy Lee. He's like a tall, lanky guy. Yeah, yeah. And he, he's got big hands too. Yeah, I told him. Uh, uh yeah. He's uh, Pete's a very sweet guy. Mm-hmm. He's uh, I told him I said come out to LA, man. Do my podcast, do Tommy's podcast, do all the podcasts. And he was like, "Really?" I was like, "He's like so innocent." He's like, "Tom Segura." I thought Tom hated me. I was like, "What?" I was like, "Tom, fucking lo- everyone loves you. Everyone loves you, Pete. You're a great guy." No, he did. I've, I've talked to him. We we did um, we did Oddball together. You know, a couple of years I think, ago. I think Pete probably. I imagine if you're under that fucking much scrutiny, you start yeah. believing. You start thinking people. Especially if you're like a legit stand-up. Like he's like a legit stand-up yeah. just to stand-up. I, kn- I know the fame stuff has blown him up and, and it, it's given him an insane different career of like, by the way, his movie Big Time Adolescence looks fucking awesome. Is the one with Burr? No. His movie Big Time Adolescence looks fucking awesome. Because I heard the one with Burr's fantastic. 
fantastic. That's the rumor in like uh, industry circles. I bet circles. it is. Yeah. I bet it fucking is. Yeah. Dude, big time adolescence. I told him that. Is he a star of that? Yeah. What is it's, that? I, it's the greatest fucking premise. He plays. Um, God, man, I'm buzzed. He plays. He, him and his girlfriend break up, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he had formed a relationship with her little brother, and her and her, him and her little brother stay, remain close. So he hangs out with her little brother, and he like gets him high. He gets him to sell weed. He gets him to tattoo. Like he's like, and and he just incorporates it. Machine Gun Kelly's in it, I think. I, I think so. I, I can't, can't really tell if he's not on stage <laughs> who he is. Yeah. But Machine Gun Kelly's I in like it. I like how you're like, this guy's in a movie. I don't know. I think he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like a blonde, tall dude. Machine Gun Kelly. Pete, and it looks just fun. Like a fun, like a little more thoughtful than uh, than um, than Super Bad. Yeah. But and and with hints of I like, love that movie. Hints of uh, of say anything because it's got it's thoughtful. It's you, fucking. You, do you see the movie? I saw the trailer. Saw Pete, the trailer. Pete said he could get me the fucking. I should text him and say I want the fucking. Tra- Pete, I want the movie. Pete is somebody who has um, over the last few years given me three different phone numbers for him. Like when I see him, he'll be like, "Oh yeah, you gotta get my new number." Should we call right. him see if they got the same number? Oh, I'm sure we have different numbers. All right, let me see your number. I probably started. By the way, I bet he's so private he does not want people to call him on the middle of a podcast. I mean, here's That's here's a couple that I have. Insane. Whoa, okay. <laughs> I saw him last week. This is. Nope, different number. Different number. Yep. Yep, I bet these are both. I bet gone. they're all burner phones. I bet yeah. he gave me a burner phone too. He was like, "Hey man, where are you again? Oh yeah, yeah. Take this one down. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, the guy takes his shirt off. Oh, cool, man. Yeah, can you hook me up with Tommy? <laughs> you need to find software, but you don't want to spend all day looking. Use Captera to simplify your search quickly. Filter options to find the features and pricing you need. Compare your top choices side by side and save your favorites. And with free in-depth software guides and tools. Plus over 1 million reviews from people like you, Captera gives you access to everything you need to know before you buy. So spend less time trying to find the software and more time doing what you do best. Find the Rice software for you at captera.com slash bears. Captera is your business ally. It's a free online resource to help you find the best software solution for your unique work needs. You can search over 700 specific categories of software. They got you covered, man. It doesn't matter what you need to project manage email marketing. You need a yoga studio management software. It has it all. It has it all. No matter what your business needs are, the Captera has got the software to help you run your business more efficiently. Visit captera.com slash bears for free today to find the right software choice for your business. Captera.com slash bears. Captera, that's C A P. T E R R A dot com slash bears Captera software selection simplified. This episode of Two Bears One Cave is brought to you by Squarespace. Love them. Uh, a while back, my wife was unhappy with our website and she wanted to change it. She went on to Squarespace and changed our website. She did this, and my wife does not know anything about uh, the internet. Not only did it make my website more beautiful, it increased our business. We started selling more merch. It made it easier. She had her ideas, and Squarespace helped them actualize her ideas onto onto the website, onto the web. And they did this with super easy to use templates. She has a. We have a blog on there. We sell all our products. We promote all my tour dates. We promote all our online business, all my podcasts. I can announce events. She did all this. And my wife knows nothing about the internet. Really nothing. Really nothing. Nothing. Everything to optimize your business. If you have a small business and you want to get a website for it. You have to have a website. This is your choice. You can do it. If Leanne can do it, you can do it. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code BEARS to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That is squarespace.com and enter the code BEARS. Squarespace. If Leanne can do it, you can do it. No. The uh, But yeah, big time adolescence looks good. Yeah, great. Can you imagine being that fucking... No. Ass? Aren't you glad, though, when you look back that that didn't happen to you? Uh, I'm Like, that would have been When Georgia worst. was born, when right before she was born, I did Last Comic Standing 2. And I got all the way to like the finals or not, semifinals or something. And I didn't make it, obviously. And I was so angry that I that I had ruined my career. 
that it wasn't happening for me then. That if it didn't happen then, it was never going to happen. And then mm-hmm. I missed my I missed my window. Yeah. When she was born, you, you saw this? I bought her a duck. I saw this duck. I bought her a duck. And I was paying for the duck. I saw, I'll get Georgia. I, she wasn't born yet. I said, I'll get my daughter a present. And I'll always remember this moment and go, and someone, and Jim Norton goes, hey man, I'm sorry about you not getting the next level. I think Jorm, Jim Norton had gotten, they ended up not, he couldn't do it because he had to deal somewhere else. And he goes, sorry about you not getting the next level, but hey man, congrats on the kid. And I looked at this duck and I go, in my head, I was like, oh, fuck my kid. Jesus Christ. I have no fucking career. I can't pay for this fucking kid. I still see that duck and I go, that was the greatest moment. Because had I gotten on last comic saying, you know how hacky I was. Especially then. Like, you know how hacky I am now. You know how hacky I was then where it was just anything like, how's a blind guy wipe his asshole? You know, like, <laughs> fucking. Do you think it would have been a disaster? Oh, it would have been a disaster. I would be nowhere. I learned so much through failure of spending 10 years on the road with no one coming to my shows. Yeah. And getting angry at audiences going, then fuck you, I'll do it my way. And and, and by the way, having friends like you and Joe, like Joe, I always say this, I, I hate to talk great about jokes. I feel like all, all anyone does is talk great about Joe and then it just makes it seem like a cult of personality. Yeah. Like him making me tell the machine story on stage and going like, this guy has to tell this story on stage changed my fucking career. It changed how I wrote material. It changed everything. It, it allowed me to be comfortable in failure, which I was not. You know me. Yeah. I was not. I was like murder, 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 murder. Yeah, always. Hacky, hacky, hacky. No, I mean, you. I've told people, I was like, man, I, I I don't know if I've ever seen somebody kill the way, like when I used to go on the road with you, I was like, Jesus Christ, man. It was a lowbrow shit. No, you were, I, well, I don't, I mean, I don't even, I don't, I don't I look back on young it. young stuff. I think it's what we yeah, did when I, we were I, young. I don't think I look back on it as like, oh, that was bad stuff. I just remember you just fucking destroying places. Wouldn't it be great if we had had video recorders then and we'd recorded all that shit, all those car rides? I told a story about the other, the other day. Someone was like, uh, it was a bar stool and they were like, hey, uh, if you could do, if you could get stats on things in your life, what would your stats be? What would you want to know stats on? I said, how many times I burp? Do you remember the time we were in the car? Yes. And you said to me, you go, hey, how many times do you think you've been you burped this last like 10 minutes? And I went, I don't think I have. And you go 20 times. You, bur- you burped 20 times. And I went, for real? And then I burped again. I went, oh my God, I am burping. You're like, yeah, what did you just eat? Like you're burping nonstop. Yeah. I, and I was like, oh, no wonder I'm having heartburn. Yeah, and then... I was like, you do it all the time, man. I do it not. I and did it I go, we're in the car. You're, and then the next week, you're like, guess what? I went to the doctor, and they said it's not normal. <laughs> I remember telling you how many times I shit my pants. You're like, hey, people don't shit their pants that much. No. No. And then you're like, it turns out I have like acid reflux. And I was like, yeah. Weren't you clued into it? And you're I was like, like, you're like if I, you hadn't said something. If you, I didn't even know I burped. And you were like, you burp a lot. A lot. Me, you, and Ian Bag, those were some of the funnest fucking nights when we, were yes. on, when we go to Brea. Yes. God. And how much of a nightmare is it going up after him? The when we did we did the South African festival together, right? Uh, and um, what's great about Ian, yeah, and this is gonna come off kind of sideways, mm-hmm. but he's a little bit of a cunt too, yeah. So like, if he doesn't like someone, oh yeah, he's very comfortable letting him know. Oh, I don't like you. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I love that about Ian. I had so many people when I was uh, on the road that I would that I would meet, and they were like, I opened for Ian. <laughs> And I was that was like, the greatest feeling. And I was like, oh, what happened? They're like, he kind of put me in my place. <laughs> I was like, I would love it. I go, tell me about it. Oh. And they're like, I showed up with like, you know, my suitcase of merch. And he was like, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Selling, you yeah. get up a new radio and you're going to sell merch. You're not doing merch. All right. Yeah. I loved it. I, I loved, loved it. I, man, he is, he is somewhere I go, how come he is not more famous? He's um, such a fucking destroyer on stage. He's he is a nightmare to follow. He would say things. What was amazing to me, I remember one time, uh, he would he would it was in one night two different guys had trucks, two different shows, uh-huh. and he used a different joke each show about the exact same truck. His crowd work is is just it's another level. I mean, speaking of speaking of when we talk about like uh, we talk about. Um, Andrew Schultz, mm-hmm. Ian Bag should be doing what Andrew Schultz is doing. Agreed. 
Agreed. Agreed. Uh, have a whole team follow them around. Yep. Just film every up. show. There's no crowd work like like Ian. It really, it really is. I got to say, Andrew Schultz does some pretty fucking fantastic. No, crowd no, work. I'm not even. Yeah, no, 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 the no. Two oh, I'm only saying that because he'll, his crowd work sometimes is pretty fucking insightful. Where you're like, did you research fucking East Indians? Like, how did you know? Yeah. That about this arm sheath. Like Dude. you're like, what the fuck? Ian Bags is just so quick. So quick and. And he can also make it out of nothing. Like I've done shows with him where there's just a guy there, you know, there's like eight people and like one guy there is a dentist and he just starts fucking making it a thing where like at the end of the show, he's tagged the guy up like 30 times, all every dentistry, refer, like it's just, it's hard to describe, but he just does, he makes magic with it. When we did South Africa, oh. uh, he's like, where there's, you know, in South Africa, there's obviously, it's this huge melting pot of, of, you know, different sects and cultures and these people are from this part of town or, or this part of the country and they believe in this, they dress yeah. it. So you would see people like really differently dressed, right? I mean, we're in South Africa and he goes, what? He's like, those, those people dye their, their beards orange because there's like guys with like orange beards and they're like, oh yeah, that's a religious thing. And he's like, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that. And they're like, uh, I wouldn't. And he's like, he, he's like back. So he's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And he like, we were like, oh shit. Because some of the South African people were like, I really wouldn't like, that's not going to go well if you do that. And, yeah. uh, and he was like, he's like, mm, okay, 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 okay. Like, I'll take my, uh, my comedy advice from you because you've never done it before. Thank you. So, and then he would, oh, so we would have an intermission. So it'd be like one, like. Host three comics, intermission I'm three comics. Right now. I know Keep you are. Going. <laughs> and uh, Ian would close out the first half, which was perfect because everyone was like, once they saw him, they were like, "Fuck that!" Like oh, yeah. we need intermission after him. So he went up there, and uh, he's doing his thing, and you can see that he's like eyeballing the guy, and you're like, we're like, he's definitely gonna. Say he's something going for it. <laughs> he's like, and look at you, sir. You look like an orangutan with your orange beard. <laughs> And then he's like, he's like, what would make you do something like that? And he would just keep tagging the guy up about dipping his face into <laughs> orange dye. Dude, the place was fall like falling oh. apart. I mean, he was destroying so hard. And then he got off and then they were like, oh, I mean, your way worked. Like, oh. you know, it was just amazing, dude. It was amazing. He, he was, is such a fucking great comic. We need to talk to him and say, you need to double down on your business and, do, and fucking be... Throwing up Instagram videos every single week of him doing crowd work. Him doing His crowd, crowd work, work is, is so good. And yeah. it, by the way, it does not always work well. No. You remember, you remember heard the time he got punched in the Richmond Funny Bone bathroom? Um, Gets off stage, guy follows him, and he goes, and he ends like, he's going to be like, hey, great job. And the guy goes, hey, wham. No. <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. And he was like, oh, it was like, guys, I thought he was going to say great show. Whoa. <laughs> oh. No, I did not know that. Do you remember the time that I, do you remember the time this is one of my favorite crowd work stories ever, 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 ever. I know I've told this on the show. I'm sorry I have. You, when you called Lady a cunt? No. Sorry, okay. I don't know if I remember that one, but it sounds right. Yeah. Um, what was amazing about the time you called Lady a cunt, uh, this was like a show with like 25 people at it. Yeah. Uh, and somewhere in Northern California. Sacramento. Uh, probably Sacramento. And that you recovered. And I couldn't believe that. <laughs> I couldn't believe because everybody was like, mm-mm. And then, and then you were like, I got her laugh. You, you got the lady to laugh that you called a cunt. That's a skill I don't have. <laughs> the, no, no, no. We're doing a show. I, stop me if I've told this story. We're doing a show in Brea. Me, you, and Adam Richmond. Not the guy from Man vs. Food. Okay. And you come off stage and you go, heads up. Sat guy in second row is saying he's blind. I don't think he's blind. And I go, okay. And you're like, just a heads up. I think he's faking it. And I went, oh, okay. So I get up on stage and I zone in on the guy. He's, it's so fucking bullshit. He's got glasses he's on. He's facing another way. He's facing another way. That's what I remember. Yep. Yeah, he's like, over he's like here. This. And you're like, show's over here, pal. I go, over yeah. here, pal. And he goes, oh, sorry, I'm blind. And I go, yeah. and immediately the way he said it, I went, no, you're not. And so I said, uh, I said, I said something and I go, uh, Take the glasses off, and his friends are dying, fucking laughing. Yeah, I am fucking laughing. And also, you're like, um, you'd think if you, these were your friends, they'd point you towards the stage. Yeah, and that's yeah. what I, I go. Yeah. I go if you were their friends, they'd spin you around. Mm -hmm. And he goes, he goes, uh, hey man, next joke. And I go, hey, uh, how hard is it to clear a room before you jerk off? And he was like, huh? I said, well, wait, hold on. I said, have you ever jerked off before? And he goes, 
no. And I said, you've never, hold on, you never jerked off. I go, now I'm bull calling bullshit on that. And he goes, no, I don't know, man. I go, you've never jerked off blind. How? I said, how hard is it to clear a room before you jerk off? When you jerk off, it's got to be scary to like start jerking off and wonder if your friends are in the back going, shh, don't tell him. And he goes, I don't know, man. And I go, well, how do you know? How do you, how do you know when you're done wiping your ass? Like when you got to look at it, right? What do you push it against the wall? And he goes, I don't know, man. I don't know. And I go, he's not fucking blind. And his friends are dying fucking yeah. laughing. I go, fuck you. And he goes, you know what? Fuck you. And he stands up and he goes to leave. And his girl gets up and he bumps into so many tables. I'm like, okay, he is definitely blind. <laughs> and then do you remember? So Wait, hold, on, <laughs> yeah. hold on, hold on. So he exits and I go, I look at his friends. I go, he's blind, isn't he? And they go, oh yeah, he's definitely blind. And I go, what the fuck? How can we know all these questions? They go, he got blind last weekend. Mm -mm. Wait, what? And that's not how it happened. What happened? You moved on and you, you didn't hear that during the show because I remember that I told you because you were like, oh, what was up with right, that guy? Right. I and I was on and, and I was in the back of the showroom and I, and I got to talk to people and then they told me, they're like, no, 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 he just became blind. The so motorcycle accident. I right? got to tell you that, and I got to see your face drop. I came off stage, and I was—I can't. You're right. You're yeah. totally right. Yeah. You're totally right because I came off stage, and you're like, oh, two things. Yeah, yeah. Number one, Adam Richmond had to get you fired. <laughs> he was like, "Do you guys want to file a complaint? You should file a complaint. Do you guys want to file a complaint? You should file a complaint." And then you're like, "Number two, you're gonna love this." Like, yeah, what? Yeah. You go. He's really blind. He's blind. And I go, he just became blind. And I go, that's why he didn't know about jerking off. And I go, because he hasn't done it yet <laughs> since he's been blind. I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. And I was like, did he file a complaint? You're like, yeah. And I go, he wrote it down. He's like, and you're like, yeah, but I gave him a napkin. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen. But it makes it better. Do you it need does. the truth to make yeah. it yes. fucking funny? Yeah. Oh, my God. This has been a really fucking great episode. This is a lot of fun, man. Yeah. Are we going to do one of these next week for your special? I think we should. I, I think we, we should. should. Yeah. We could definitely do this. I can, I'm not done. I got a whole fucking beer here. You got three more. And my phone is blowing up. How how fast can you what? drink dare that me. beer? Dare me. How fast can you drink? By the way, I, I, I don't know if... Has your mom's house aired yet? No. Okay. The thing we talk about on your mom's house this mm -hmm. week mm -hmm. that we're talking about doing... March 17th. Yeah? I tried it yesterday. You tried it? A little bit, and it was really difficult. It was? Very. Well, especially with alcohol involved. What'd you try to do? Which one? Which, Which one are you talking about? I don't know. Now I'm confused. The, uh, the one that Nikki Glaser does. Oh. Yeah. You tried it for a day. I tried it for half a day. No good. It was really tough. It's not hard. Breakfast sandwiches make it easy. Do you just have those all day? Yeah, just eat breakfast sandwiches for every fucking meal. Um, That's going to be challenging. Do one of these next week for your special? I think so. I yeah. think it's a good idea. Yeah, I like try. that they tether our specials together. Yeah, it's going to be great. I think, I think it's how people will... Find mine, see yours, see yours, find mine. Absolutely. I think it's great. Delia's is coming out when? Like a week or two later. A week or two later. Delia's is going to be fucking awesome. I would yeah. just wish he was fatter so they could tether us together. I know. He's definitely not. How big do you think his dick is? It's probably just healthy. Like, it's not, you know, I think it's plus sized, but I'm saying. I bet yeah. it looks like a dildo. Like, it looks like really? just like perfect. I could probably see it. I'll, He's got I'll big ask. fucking hands. Yeah. Yeah. How much money do you think he has? Tons. No kids, right? And now, I mean, now no. he does. Yeah, he does. No kids for, I'm talking 10 years of money making. Right, right. And he had sitcoms before even his stand-up really blew up. He was on sitcom after sitcom. No, he's got to have a nice pile. I made all my money after kids. That's great. Don't you Is think? It? I yeah. Know. I mean, yeah. it's better than making it and then having kids and not making money. Right. And but, like, yeah, but like... Your money, you're you're not gonna. I mean, you're gonna pay for college, but you didn't have to go. I don't know if we're going to college. No, I don't think so. Maybe Ada goes to culinary school. <laughs> I don't think she's going to college. And if she does, I'm showing up like Rodney Dangerfield. Hey, no class. <laughs> I got no class. Oh my god, you're gonna show up to a college campus with your daughter, and they're I gonna said be to like, Georgia. 
I said to Georgia, so for the fall to 2021 tour, yeah. 2021 tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said to Georgia, st- put your fucking phone down. No, someone's just here. Hey, will you go let her know? Oh, do you have to do another podcast? Someone, no, 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 no. I got something. I'll tell you in a minute. Am I going to see it? No, no, no. It's not like that. It's not like that. What is it? It's just somebody here. Who is it? It's it's for a wardrobe thing. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh. Um, so for fall 2021, I'm going to take, I'm going to do a tour and I'm going to do all my favorite college towns that I would like to go to if I go to college. Yeah, cool. Columbus, mm-hmm. like all the fucking town, like Florida State, South Carolina, uh, fucking D- Dallas, I went yep. to SMU, all the colleges where I was like, that would be a cool college experience. Yep. And I'm going to fly Georgia and her friends, whatever friends she wants, out on the bus. And they're going to hang with, hang with us. I'll get them hotel rooms, but they'll yeah. travel from city to city in those places yeah. and go see college towns during the day. That's great. And I'm like, and I want her to, and then she already said, she goes, I want to go to community college. That'll be this coming fall or the next, next fall? Next fall, not this fall. This fall's, this tour is uh, not any college towns, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait for this fucking tour. For the fall one? I hope the Hunan virus clears up soon because I'm going Wuhan. to Asia. Who? Wuhan. Wu Tang. Wu Han. Is it, it, what have I been calling it? You said Hu Han. Hu Nan. Hu Nan. Yeah. No. Um, he thinks there's some surprise. surprise. It's the Stanley Cup. <laughs> um, the, uh, no, I, I hope it clears up. I have an Asian tour planned. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Fuck it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, look, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Throw Italy in there. Why don't you go there? I yeah. will. I love Italy. Northern Italy, do Iran, maybe South Korea, and then fucking call it a wrap. Yeah. Done, done, son. Do the, uh, it could be called like the machine is. Uh, testing the machine. Yeah, testing the machine or um, infectious machine. <laughs> the respirator. You can't take the machine down. Can't take the machine down. I love it. Yeah, I think it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea at all. Yeah. What, uh, what's, when do you announce your tour for 2020? Um, oh, the 2020 tour, I, I, or no, for the rest of 2020, I will edit out the thing I said to you last week where I was like, you guys should do that. Yeah. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Can I direct it? Sure. (laughs) I'm announcing a tour, um, in April for the remainder of 2020. Yeah. And then I'm going to announce a 2021 tour in the fall. In the vault, nice. Oh, so you you've already planned twenty twenty one? Well, it's being set up. I Holy already shit. I already have holds because I'm, I'm. But I'm not doing what you're doing. You're you're touring heavily throughout this year. Yeah. So I I take it like a little lighter, and then I ramp it up at the end of the year. When are you and Push going to do a tour together and get a tour bus and have the boys on there with you? When they're a little older. Oh yeah. I mean, one's mind. nineteen months. So I don't think he's. <laughs> are they not good on tour buses. I don't think so. Not this no, guy. Fucking quick, we leave him on the side. Oh the my god, man. Oh. A whole white baby here, man. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that? <laughs> There's a whole white baby on the federal highway, man. What's that from? You didn't see that? No. Dude, that <laughs> is a fucking amazing. Do you have it? Uh, yeah, I pulled it up. Okay, he'll pull it up. Put your headphones on. Oh, I thought you said iPhones. Yeah, this is pretty great. This is real. This is real. Okay. Oh, yeah, you get to put it on that way. Yeah. Lovely hat. Thank you very much. It looks expensive. It's not at all. Really? Yeah, I had to rent hats for a photo shoot, and they were like, the Gormans will like let you borrow five hats, but it costs thirty three bucks unless you buy one. And I was like, I'll just buy one. Oh, yeah, that's Which, a thirty three dollar hat. I don't know exactly. I wasn't paying attention to prices. Hey, guess what? Well, I, I can barely I, hear I you. I think I think you can turn the, turn the headphones up. Turn the headsets up. Do you know that? Um, I got a text message, uh, like just a little while ago, that. I think we announced that it's going to be, it's going to be cleared. It was officially cleared, and they're going to be shipped soon. Those two bears, one cave hats with New Era. No fucking way. Yes, the one. Remember the ones that they. Yeah, gave, yeah, yeah, yeah. That so it got approved by MLB and NBA or whatever. So those are coming. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Fitted hats. Fitted hats. Yeah, with but we can we can they gave us the license agreement to sell them. Mm-hmm. We're gonna be millionaires. <laughs> it's pretty exciting. That's fucking awesome. That hat's dope. Yeah, that's fucking awesome. Yep. So we'll uh, as soon as they come in, uh, we'll announce it. It'll be fun. We man. should make a sweatshirt with those two logos. That's a good idea. Yeah. Shit. Okay. Take a look at this. 
Boy, we out here, boy, on the Fidgeria Highway, boy. I swear to Lord, boy, this baby, anybody that looking for, looking for a baby, dog, it's a baby out here in the middle of the road, bruh. I never seen no shit like this, bruh. What? We on the Fidgeria Highway, bruh. It's a baby out here, bruh, on everything, in the okay. middle of the road. A baby, bruh, in the middle of the fucking road, no pants on, no shoes on, bruh, in the middle of the highway, bruh. We done called one time, bruh. This baby in the middle of the Fidgeria Highway, bruh. Whole white baby, bruh. No, no nothing on. And his parents still ain't showed up yet. I should have had that guy read my audio book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. It's, it, those last two words blended into one. Yeah. That is fucking, I love his accent. Yeah. I wish I could speak like that and not, people not call me racist. Y'all, anybody know this baby, bro? Anybody, dude, please say something, bro, because this baby in the middle of the house. This baby in the, this baby just at you, bro. <laughs> this baby just at you, bro. Just, just at you. This baby just side here. I ain't never seen no shit like that before. <laughs> as hard life. as it is out here, my family had to get a baby the damn jacket. <laughs> damn, damn. Hey. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Is this kid on lean? This uh, kid looks fucking drunk. <laughs> I think I think my man just needed a nap and wandered outside. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck? I, I, you gotta, I love these two ki guys that yeah. they rescued a child. Had to give him a jacket, bro. Jacket, bro. <laughs> this kid's like, hey, man, fuck these two. <laughs> they keep the kid for just like a Look, couple one months. one time, pulling up right now. One time. <laughs> Holy pulling up right now. Holy. Ain't nobody, we been out here about, about 30 minutes. Ain't no parent been behind him or nothing. Baby just out here. <laughs> I hope we get to meet these white parents. We get to see one. Mm. And she's he like, been in the road. What? He was in the road, man. This, we been out here about 30 minutes. This dumb woman, listen to her. How you doing? Hi. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, she just got her baby straight back. Deal. What he even doing? Look at these white folks. Look at these white Excuse folks. me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look. He's just, that's him mocking white people. He goes, look at these white folks. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. I need my baby back. What he even doing? Look at these white folks. Excuse me. Oh. Dude, she saw her baby that's been missing from her house in a stranger's arms on a highway. And she's like, Kaden, what have you been doing? What have you been doing? Oh, I get over here. I don't know you're out here with, your, <laughs> with the boys. Is that all you guys got to find my whole white baby? <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking for my whole white baby in the house. <laughs> oh, I love that guy's fuck. What was the spit for? Um, we, we spent a lot of time on that. Um, I <laughs> he just looks at the camera. There's a whole white baby out here, bruh. It's whole I don't know. white baby, bruh. <laughs> oh, white baby, bruh. Had to give What's, him a where's jacket. he from? Where's he from? Mississippi? I thought this was uh, like outside Atlanta, like some type of you know Georgia neighborhood. I couldn't tell. I don't know where the Fidgeril Highway. Fitzgerald is highway? it? I thought it was the refrigerator. Someone highway. someone emailed in saying that that's what it was. Can you, where is that Fitzgerald though? Fitzgerald Highway. Where's a fit? Where's a Fitzgerald Highway? Fitzgerald Highway, bruh. Where does that run? Georgia. Georgia. Oh, oh scroll down. Found in Douglas. Valdosta. That's Georgia, man. Driving their Chrysler 300 on the Fitzgerald Highway in Coffee County, they saw something ahead in the road. Is that right? Is Don Car Din Dicarius? An Ontario Fusel who go by Sean and Teasy, traveling down. His name's Duncarius. I mean, that's, that's what I thought it said. Is that short for? Oh, Dunk is this an interview with them? Oh my Come God! Come on. We out here. The Douglas natives are being recognized as local heroes. As Simone Jameson reports, their quick thinking and actions uh -uh. helped save a Hang child's on, hit pause. life. Yeah. Hang on. Duncarius. Do yeah. when they? Who's the reporter? Simone Jackson. I didn't even hear it. That's, yeah. I wonder if they were like, Simone, uh, we can't understand them. Could we send you? <laughs> yeah, sure thing. I <laughs> I speak hood. Uh, Dicarious and Deton. Go ahead. 
Hamilton, Ontario Fussell, who go by Sean and TZ, were traveling down Fitzgerald Highway on their way back to Douglas Fitzgerald Sunday highway. when they noticed something peculiar in the middle I of the highway. We take a left, right next to next block over on Pine Forge. The baby standing at the middle in the middle of the road with a semi coming. And that's why I first come saw in. a semi. <laughs> that's where I come in. <laughs> horn, the horn, not stopping at all. That's when the men jumped into action stopping in the middle of the road to save the child, wearing little more than a diaper. As seen in this Facebook Unreal. Live video, they cover the child with a sweatshirt to keep him warm, keeping him in their car till authorities arrived on scene. Like, if you see my neighborhood, you know, that don't really happen over here. You see no baby in the road. Couldn't just leave the baby, no matter what color it was, white, black, Mexican, you know, I had to get the baby out the road. The Douglas Police Department I knew it. among <laughs> I the knew political it. agencies, now paying special recognition to Sean and TZ for their actions. Chief Shane Edmiston says that with the amount of traffic on this roadway, the child they rescued could have easily had a different outcome. It was an unfortunate situation that the child got out of the house. Uh, the mom thought he was taking a nap. Could have been a bad situation See, that child. Good, that's right. If that's someone nasty. hadn't have seen the child and, and the child would have been hit. Those two gentlemen did a great thing that day. Through the entire experience, I regret that one day I'll have to shoot both of them in the back. They hailed as heroes but encourage anyone in the same situation to do the same thing they did. I done had a lot of people say, well, thank God y'all went and kidnapped us. Thank God y'all, you know, didn't steal the baby. No, not being a hero. It's just called being a good Samaritan and just trying to help. Well, any good Samaritan this should This is where I come in. Simone James said, This, this is where my, I come that's in. That's my favorite line of the whole thing. He's like telling her when he's like, this is where I come in, man. This is where I come in. Unreal. That's me and you. That is you and me on the Fidrial Highway. On the Fidrial Highway. I mean, he wasn't even close. Okay. Wait, which um, one am I? Um, you are, hmm. Now, you're the guy who said, this is where I come in. This is where I come in. Yeah, because I'd be like, yeah, I saw the baby, and I took my jacket off, and you'd be like, and this is where I come in. Yeah, yeah like I took my, and you were like, I don't care if it's white, black, or Asian, I'm gonna rescue it. And I was like, and this is where I come in. Yeah, you would be like, well, let's make this about me though. <laughs> but this is about you. So um, streaming right now, go see Hey Big Boy. It's on Netflix. It's a yep. great special. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Next week, Tom Segura's Ball Hog on Netflix. Yep, we'll oh, do it again. I got lots to talk to you about. Oh yeah, we yeah. have a lot to talk about. All right, we'll see you. Bye guys. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. No scripts, a bit of booze, amateur partology. Dirty jokes, raunchy humor, no apologies. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.